Just as a way of wrapping up uh, our, our uh, trek through time here, one of the things we did to try to get ready for the centennial is put up some display of things that would kind of help people very quickly walk through the history of this property in, in Borough Hall. And um, we put together this little wall to do that. This um, shows the original survey, a copy of the original survey of the turnpike, and that's the first map that you see the triangular lot on. And that's 1807. Okay. And then uh, these pieces of junk here are uh, things that were dug up on the property when they excavated for the firemen. I think it's great stuff. To yeah, have. yeah. And th the oldest piece is this neck of a wine bottle, and uh, pottery and oyster shells. Uh, uh, they are probably the earliest date uh, of of the objects, and they were the first tip we had that there was something here before the Dowdy Castle. Yeah, nobody had ever paid much attention to that fact. Although it was recorded, nobody took cognizance of it. Yeah, so then we found out that it had been a tavern mm -hmm. and that the building was um, moved off and became part of Somerville's Young Ladies Academy. And so we have an idea of what it looked like. It was a simple frame building that uh, was moved across to the other side of West End. And I have to thank you for uh, tipping me off uh, to uh, where that bit of information could be found in the county history. And then we get to um, the period that we've talked about mostly today, uh, Albert Kamen's house, at which Dowdy lived in, and it was the first castle on, yeah. on the property. And then around the time, that was built in the 1830s and 40s, yeah. and it was the time that being a, having a castle as your home was very popular. And that's when the Bridgeport Mansion was first built. So this is the Bridgeport house that uh, Borough Hall's a copy of. And this house was purchased by the city of Bridgeport in the 50s and demolished to make a parking lot. Yeah, it was not considered, well they did recognize it was important because they saved some of it yes. for the Smithsonian Institution. Yes, they so did and there was a monograph on it, written on mm -hmm. it, but they didn't try to preserve the building itself. And then, uh, lo and behold, here's the exact copy of it in sitting in Borough Hall, and this is an original uh, print from a, a glass plate negative, and we think this is how the property looked about 1899. You see the pillars out there and the wrought iron gate that we talked about, as well as the porch uh, coming uh, off the side. Now this uh, is the carriage house that was in the back of the property and it's a Tudor style carriage house and you know a little bit about that. Jessica. Yeah, that, that was also copied from Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. They did the, they copied everything. They didn't, as long as they were doing it, they did the whole job. Yeah, and that became the Borough Police that Station. That was the police headquarters and it, it was right behind the building where the Senior Citizens Tower is now and it's fortunate that it was there because the first fire, which was in 1967, was discovered because of policeman coming back from his tour of duty to the headquarters happened to look at the building at the Borough Hall and notice smoke and thereby an alarm was sent in otherwise we might not have Borough Hall today. Yeah. And the other piece of information that is um, interesting comes from the Elks tenure and it's over here uh, to my right and you'll see first a picture of Borough Hall as it appeared during the Elks era in the uh, 1930s. It's the um, original color of the building can be seen. Nowadays we've painted it because uh, it hides the uh, scorching on parts of the building okay. from the fire. Uh, and then we see two designs that were considered by the Elks in the late 1920s for building an extension onto Borough Hall. This one has a really massive building with the castle uh, extending out onto probably what would have been Mountain Avenue. That's how huge mm -hmm. it was. And then a more interesting and scaled back design uh, in 1928 that they considered as an alternative. And we all know what happened in 1929. The stock market crashed and nobody had any money. So these dreams were not able to be realized. And then when the Elks did, in fact, um, construct something, it was not until the 30s, yeah. late 30s. Yeah. And it was 
but it, and it was modest by comparison, but it was quite grand nevertheless. Yeah, and it did, in fact, if you look closely at this particular one, it actually kept some of the ideas. Mm -hmm. um, you do have this sort of bump out that's yeah. a, a front, a side entry, and you have the cathedral style windows, three of them, and so they kind of tried to do a scaled back version of that when they built the library add-on. Yeah, and they the did the best they could with what they had to work with. At the time. And the, the final thing that's interesting is that um, the original Bridgeport mansion had a library edition built onto mm -hmm. it too, so inadvertently uh, they copied Bridgeport once again, although by that time um, uh, uh, the report no longer existed? Yep, or was pretty close to being considered a, mm -hmm. um, a derelict house in need to be uh, mm -hmm. ripped up. And the Bridgeport one was, of course, quite a different style, mm -hmm. but yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was a, a gothic type of style. So that's kind of the history of, of Borough Hall and, in a way, history of Somerville itself. Yes, it's, it's fun to see how things progress.